in the same vein, it's difficult to get away from the fact that uh, in Colossians, he says submit. In Ephesians, he says submit. In Peter, he's saying submit. It means there's something about it that women are required to submit to their husbands. But the next thing is to understand what the Bible means by submission. Because when it's rightly understood, it is no longer a burden something to do. It, is, it means basically cooperate with your husband. Your own husband, not somebody's husband. So no man should go around and think every woman is supposed to submit to them. It's your husband, your own husband. Cooperate with your husband. Respect him. Try to see eye to eye with him. In fact, in Ephesians, even before talking about women submitting, he says, submit yourselves to one another out of reverence for Christ. So the men don't get away from submission as well, but I think there's a way in which it keeps coming up for the women that if I'm a woman and I'm considering how I please God in my marriage, I must cherish my desire to submit to my own husband. Oh, this should be, it should be the ladies saying amen, not the men. But they are all quiet. They are quiet. So let your marriage please God. It means there will be submission. There will be respect. And then you will value true and lasting beauty as a woman. True and lasting beauty is not in outward appearances. Because those ones, they fade. As you know, <laughs> one of the things that attracted me to my wife was her long hair. Very, very long hair. I have the pictures to prove. You will not know it if you see her today, but it was a long hair. But over the years, <laughs> the hair is not as long as it used to be. So if it's only physical appearance, then some of those factors are gone. I pray that your, your focus will not only be on physical, it will be inner beauty. That one, it doesn't fade. And it's attractive because it's a quiet and gentle spirit. A quiet and gentle spirit. So, you know, value true and lasting beauty as a woman. It doesn't mean don't dress up or look good. No, but it's saying that beyond just physical beauty, let your one ultimate goal be that you will carry spiritual beauty. It reminds me of... Uh, was it last year when my son was getting married? At the reception, he was giving his speech. And I was amazed at how this young man had grown into a man. And he said, for my wife, Sandra, the only thing that outshines her physical beauty is her inner beauty. I said, wow, this man. Wow. Wow. See what he's saying about his wife. He says it's not the physical one, although she's beautiful, it's the inner one. I say, oh, clap for him. But anyway, the fact is that if a woman, you want your marriage to please God, be submitted to your husband. Respect him. And, uh, and then also make sure that you value true and lasting beauty. What about men? If you want your marriage to please God as a man, Love your wife. How? Love your wife like Christ loved the church. How did he love the church? He sacrificed his life for the church. His one desire was that the best come out of the church. So it's not about selfishness and sitting down to be saved, but that you focus on bringing out the best out of your wife. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Again, love your wife as you love your own body. So what you know is not good for you, don't put it on the person. Think of her just like you think about yourself. Don't overwork her. Don't stress her unnecessarily. The thing you wouldn't want done to you, don't do it to her. Love her. Because in truly loving her, you make it easier for her to also submit to you. So if you want to please God in your marriage as a man, I think the main thing is that love. Love your wife. As Christ loved the church and love your wife as your own self. And respect your wife and treat her as an equal. Don't let anything give you the impression that just by being a man, you are higher than a woman. Some men think that way. And so small trouble, then they, they turn the women into punching bags. 
because they feel they are more important and then they must have their way all the time. That is a lie of the devil from the pit of hell. Love your wife, respect her, and treat her as an equal. Because she's truly an equal. When God wanted to create humans, he created them male and female. And what did he do? He blessed them. He sees them as equal. But in terms of function, yes, there may be a head. But I, I, I remember one thing one friend said uh, at our 25th wedding anniversary. He came to me and he said, he likes to say it this way. The men are the head, but the woman is the neck. And, you know, so the neck controls the head. So, <laughs> so, so yes, you are the head, but she's the neck. Respect her because she has a very important part in your life. And you know, can I tell you something? Yeah. No, this is not a message, but let me tell you something. You know, when men go out, they want to be seen as the leaders around. But most men at home is the woman who is the leader. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Don't, don't tell anybody. Outside, they are the leaders, but at home, the women are the leaders. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> So, already you know their value, now demonstrate it. Respect them and treat them as equal. So that's the first point, let your marriage please God. Second, bring the best out of each other. That's the second point I want to give you. Just bring the best out of each other. The way you treat your spouse must make her the best that she can be. It means that the words you speak to her must encourage her, must cheer her up. You must be her number one cheer leader. Bring the best. You see, marriage, I've noticed one thing that makes it work is that don't focus on yourself. Focus on your spouse. And focus on the well-being of your spouse. Please, it's not too late to press the reset button. If that's not what you have practiced all these years, so long as you are breathing and you are alive, you can press the reset button. Turn to your neighbor and say you can press the reset button. You can. You can. You can. Yes. Press it. Your, your, your spouse, without saying, must know that you are their greatest champion. That you are the one who stands and desires the best for them. The one who sees what they haven't seen and knows it's possible with them. The one who is speaking life into them and bringing the best out of them. If that hasn't been the practice, press the reset button and make it the practice now. Bring the best out of each other. Be the change you want to see. Don't put the pressure on the other person. Don't go home and say, did you hear what pastor said? You need to be doing it. You have not been doing it. You do that and you have missed the point. Just hear what pastor is saying and put it into practice. And when you are practicing it, I tell you, you, you know, when light is shining, darkness cannot stand it. If you begin to practice it, the other way will just vanish. Because you are doing the right thing, it will set the tone in your home. Set the tone in your home by bringing the best out of each other. Bring the best out of each other. By the things you say, the way you say them, the way you encourage and care for your spouse. And to bring the best, there's one aspect I just want to mention. Don't repay wrong with wrong. In fact, just practice forgiveness. Don't be historical. I'm not saying hysterical, I'm saying historical. <laughs> and historical, they only remember the things that you did that they didn't like. Last three years you did this, last two years you did this, and this year too you are doing it. They haven't forgotten, it's all recorded. Please, wipe that slate clean. Refresh, press the refresh button. Refresh the computer. You refresh, refresh, refresh. If you want to bring the best out of someone, there's no way you can do it if you're always reminding them of what they did you didn't like, what they did wrong, and what they have done wrong. Who has never done wrong? Who has never done wrong? We've all done wrong. God has mercy on us. Prepare your marriage the way you want it. Bring the best out of each other. And I'm saying so long as you are alive, it's not too late to put these things into practice. Are you understanding me? 
bring the best. Don't go and ask the other party to bring the best out of you. You decide that you bring the best out of them. And in order to do that, you care, you speak words of um, life into them, but above all, you don't repay wrong with wrong. Let go of every wrong. If God has sustained you to this day, he will stake you all the way. I like what Joseph said to his brothers. You meant this thing for evil, but God has turned it around for my good. And I want you to live in a place where you know that you know that you know that people can mean things for whatever, but God will turn it around for your good. And because God will turn it around for your good, don't hold grudges. Don't bear people in. Be free in your heart. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? They will try, but it will come to nothing. So in your marriage, bring the best out of each other. Finally, say finally. finally. Embrace and embody 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11. Finally, embrace and embody. In 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11, he says, Whoever will love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil. Let's read it, 10 and 11. There are three things there that I want to mention quickly. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. So, embrace and embody, First Peter 3, 10 and 11 means that. Embrace and embody three things. Watch your words. Speak kindly and honestly. Speak truth in love. Watch your words. You know, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. By your words, you can bring joy. By your words, you can bring pain. By your words, you can bring life. By your words, you can bring chaos. But here he's encouraging us to turn away from evil and speak truthfully. So the first thing is that watch your words. Speak kindly and honestly. Speak kindly and honestly. Don't have that attitude that I will speak the truth anyhow. No, 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 no. Truth spoken anyhow can do more harm than good. Learn to speak the truth with love. Learn to speak the truth with compassion. Why are you speaking it? Don't live life where it's all about your frustrations. Hear me. Don't live life where it's all about your frustrations. Live life where it's about the good of the other party. Took me long to learn this. Leave it where it's about the good of the other party. So whatever you are saying, even about their errors or flaws or whatever you are addressing, is for their good. It's not because you are so frustrated. You want to say it anyhow. Watch your words. Speak truth, but speak it kindly. Speak truth, but speak it with love. Let that be the tone you set in your home. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Watch your actions. Be courteous, generous, and forgiving. Let your actions show courteousness, you know, courtesy to one another. Courtesy, respectful. Be generous. Be generous. Let your action be, you know, be, always think of the well being of the other party, not your own well being. And be forgiving. Be forgiving. Quickly drop what is wrong. Never dwell on it. When you dwell on it, it changes your mood, it changes your behavior, and it doesn't make the home a healthy home. Be generous, be courteous, and be forgiving. Finally, watch your attitudes. Watch your attitudes. Those are the three things I'm asking you to embrace and embody. Your words, your actions, and your attitudes. Before I talk about attitude, let me remind you once again. I'm not giving you a weapon to go home and say, did you hear what the pastor said? You have been falling short in all these areas. As soon as you do that, you have failed the test. You are listening to it and going and saying, what can I do about this myself? As a husband or as a wife. But not going to the other party and say, did you hear? You should have been doing these things. That's why. You know, no, it doesn't work well that way. Am I helping somebody? So, watch your attitudes. Remember that the fruit of the Spirit is never out of season. 
It's not like mango or orange which grows in season. The fruit of the Spirit is never out of season. In effect, it's always in season. Every season is good to treat each other, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control must be there all the time. Watch your attitudes. Carry an attitude of peace, an attitude of kindness, an attitude of gentleness in your home. May God help us. May God truly help us that this will be what is found in our homes. And this is what we are practicing. That we take personal responsibility for the good of our marriages. We don't put it on the other party. We take personal responsibility. And as we do that, we are setting a tone for our home. A tone that we'll be happy to see our children imbibe and continue with. So that when we see our, the marriages of our children and our grandchildren, we'll be happy and excited that they are on track for a blessed marriage. May God bless us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.